In this lesson, we're going to solve two more formulas for a specific variable. So in the one on the left, we're going to solve s equals a plus b plus c all over 2 for b, for that variable in the middle on top of that fraction. All right, so remember, we're treating all letters besides b like they're numbers. So first thing, let's rewrite this. And let's understand that, remember, a fraction bar is kind of like a grouping symbol um, in the sense that you, uh, you kind of have a plus b plus c all grouped together up here and it's all divided by two. And remember when we're solving an equation, uh, we go in the reverse order of operations. So since parentheses come first, um, in the order of operations, um, we want to kind of touch A, B, and C last in our solving process. So what that means is we want to take care of this division by two as our first step. And so we can get rid of that two that we're dividing by by simply multiplying both sides of the equation by two. And I'm going to show it as two over one on the right side. And of course that allows twos to cancel on the right. And so what that ends up giving us is 2s on the left equals a plus b plus c on the right. Now you just have to keep in mind here that a and c are just numbers, okay? So if we had a number plus our variable, what would we do? Well, we would take that number away from both sides. So we would have 2s minus a equals b plus c. And then if we have a variable plus a number, we would again take that number away to isolate our variable. So it turns out that b is equal to 2s minus a minus c. This example here um, is kind of a complicated looking one. Um, this actually uh, is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. So this is a formula you'll run into throughout mathematics. And we want to solve this one for h. And h happens to be the height of your cylinder. So volume equals pi r squared h. Now there's different ways that you could go about this, but um, I'm going to try to show you the most efficient way to do this problem. And I think for the way I'm going to show you to make sense, I'm going to show you a very strange example first. Okay, so let me give myself a little room here. So suppose that we were trying to solve this equation here. We we're trying to solve 12 equals 2 times x times 3. Now, if you were encountered with this, the thing you should do would be to uh, change 2 times x times 3 to 6x, right? That would be the normal thing to do here. And then you would divide both sides by 6, right? And so you'd get 2 equals x, okay? But I'm going to show you a strange way to do it that we might be able to apply the ideas from to our formula. So instead of multiplying 2 and 3 together, I suggest we do this. On the right side, I am multiplying by 2 and I'm multiplying by 3 and I want to get rid of both of them. So if I multiply or sorry, divided by 2 times 3 on both sides, on the right side, I would get both the 2 and the 3 canceling at the same time, right? So I would still achieve my goal of getting x all by itself. But at the same time, 2 times 3 is still just 6. And so I get x equals 12 over 6, which means x equals 2. So either way, I get the same answer whether I bother to multiply 2 and 3 together first or not. So the reason I show this is because in our formula, we have this pi symbol and we have r squared. 
and I can't get those together, right? I have to keep those as separate symbols, but they are really just acting like my two and my three here. So if I want to solve for H, I want to get rid of pi, which I can do by dividing by it, but at the same time, I could divide by r squared at the same time, and so overall I'm dividing by pi times r squared. Of course, that's fine as long as I do that on the left as well. And so everything that I need to cancel out on the right side does, pi cancels, r squared cancels, and so now I have h all by itself, and it's equal to v over pi r squared.